the secret sect, secret step, the secret septicai. Hi, I am Nick T. Clemens, and I used to make stuff like this. Making custom boxes can be really fun, and a great way to package and present your homemade gift. Or perhaps give your Etsy product a more professional look. You may have seen some of the boxes that I have made in previous videos, such as the glue bottle bucket, the knickmake ornaments, the secret septic eye Sam. Every year I make Lisa a custom, one-of-a-kind, page-a-day calendar, and everyone gets a box. Now, I've shown the assembly process of the boxes before, which is more or less just folding them up, but today I'd like to go through the entire process, start to finish, of how I make these boxes. Now, making a custom box can really be just as easy as putting a label on an existing box. For example, Michaels sells these really nice cardboard boxes in a variety of sizes, and as you can see, with just putting a label that covers the top, we have a really nice custom box that was super easy to do. To make a fully customized box, or perhaps just a box to a very specific size, like this one here for this honeymoon box that I made, to make it safer to transport, a box for a box, if you will, well, that process really isn't that much more complicated, especially when most of the work's already been done for you. See, before you can really start designing your box, you need a template. Now, you can get out your ruler and a pencil and just start drawing one up by hand, or, you can use a website. A great box template maker website that I like to use is templatemaker.nl. And they have a wide variety of really unique boxes to choose from. I find that the gift box works for most of my needs. As you can see, all you have to do is enter in your dimensions, click submit, and it generates a box template. Surebeat's trying to map all that stuff out by hand. Earlier, I mentioned the secret septic I Sam. Well, as an example, I figured we could make a small box for the mini Sam that I made. Measuring that real quick, it's about two and a half inches by one and a half by one and a half. So if you go to the template maker, we'll just switch over to inches. Height is two and a half, but we'll up that to maybe 2.75. Width is one and a half, but we'll up that to maybe 1.75 by 1.75. Now the default size for all of these is usually fine, but it's really cool that you basically have full control over the template, so it's extremely flexible. But with our main dimensions entered, we can just hit submit. And just like that, we have a template that should perfectly fit our little secret septic guy Sam. And I'll just go ahead and save that PDF to disk. I can open that up in Photoshop, 8.5 by 11 document. We'll just copy that template into it. As you can see, this is a great template as an example because the whole thing can print on an 85 by 11 sheet, so you can do this on a home printer without needing anything oversized or having to glue multiple pieces together. Now I'm basically just going to design this like the box that I made for the full size one, so I'm pretty much just going to drag all of these elements over into our new template. First I'll just make this outline gray, and we'll just make that black. So there's our black box. Now a fun little extra that I like to do with most of my designs is throw on a UPC code. It just gives it that little extra bit of realism. And as you can see for the Sam box, I've priced it at $12.99 or 14 and a half potatoes. And as far as the UPC code number, I usually like to embed some sort of relevant thing into that code. And to do that, I like to use this alpha phrase to phone number calculator. So we can just enter something like septic eye Sam and convert that into a number. Then we can take that number, plug that into a cool little barcode generator and save that out. And then just bring that into our document. Now, just because of the way barcodes work, your last digit is going to be automatically generated based on the actual barcode. So you don't get control over what that number actually is. So for something like Secret Septic Eye Sam, where it is the perfect amount of digits, 
but m should be six and not three. I'll just fudge that in the code. So the number won't actually be what the barcode is, but it's close enough. And, and the point is really that we're just embedding that cool little Easter egg into the code, so it doesn't really matter. And we'll bring in a picture of the mini Sam out of the box. And we'll just rotate that. Because right now the orientation of the box is this is the front face here and then this is the back side. And that looks pretty good. Um, I'm just gonna do one extra thing for this box. If you've seen the Nick Make ornaments, um, I did those for those boxes, but we're going to actually cut out this blue area and we'll put in a clear plastic window so you can actually see through it. And that should be pretty cool looking. Now, as far as actually printing this, you're gonna get the best results if you can print on your actual box material. So if your printer can actually handle running some really thick card stock or poster board through it, that's gonna look really great. So I got the box printed on some really thick card stock. This is 130 pound card stock. So this is going to make a really nice box. And then having that image printed directly on this material, it's just going to make it look that much more professional. Now my printer can barely handle this. You can see that there's a little bit of scuffing on it, but it was able to make it through the machine. Now, if you're not able to run something this thick through your printer, or perhaps you want your box to be made of even thicker material like this thick cardboard, you can, of course, print your box on some sticker paper. Then we can just apply that sticker to our thick cardboard. And this is gonna give us a nice, thick, sturdy box and our image is gonna look really good. Now this is some really high quality sticker paper so it should stick very well, but over time it may eventually start to peel. So that's one of the drawbacks of using something like a sticker. But of course, if you don't even have a sticker, you can just print it on some plain paper. Sheet of tissue paper to protect our work surface. Take your card. Hit that with a little bit of spray adhesive. And then stick our copy, just printed on plain paper, to our cardboard. Another box ready to go. We didn't have to break our printer. And again, this might have the same issue as the sticker. This may peel at one point or another, but you're still gonna get a really nice box. Now, word of caution, if you are going to use something this thick or even thicker when making your box, you're gonna to wanna to think about that when you're adding in those initial dimensions because that's going to change the amount of fold and bend that this box has and it's going to affect the overall size of the box. So it may not fold correctly or it may even end up being too small if you didn't take into consideration how thick your material actually is. So that's why I like this 130 pound paper. It's really not going to affect the size of the box, but we're still gonna get a nice sturdy box. We can print through it. It seems to be the best of all the worlds. So with a new sharp blade in my knife, we'll just cut this out. Now, if I haven't mentioned this before, I really like cutting on glass. It doesn't dull your knife out. It's a really smooth cut. So you're only cutting through your actual material. These cut boards are nice but your knife is going to stick in them. They will wear out over time. Now one advantage is this has some grip. If you're working on glass, your material can slide. So you do have to use a bit of extra force. Both a little practice, you can pretty much overcome that. And I think the pros of cutting on a glass surface much outweigh the cons. Oh yeah, one other issue with working on a glass surface, uh, if you're trying to videotape it, is it reflects light, so it's, Kind of difficult to light overhead without some weird light shapes showing up, so. I'll just take my straight edge right up to that faint line from our template. And just start cutting. And I'm gonna try and do all of the cuts in this orientation where my line is on the right, my ruler is on the left. And now this is a score line, a fold line. So I like to flip my knife over Use the back side of the knife and put in that score. Now you can, of course, try and do that by just using lighter pressure, but by flipping the knife over, you pretty much guarantee you're not going to cut through your material and you're still going to get a really nice score line. Now here I just have to be careful to start and stop my cut without going too far into this flap here. It's kind of a balancing act between how dark you want to print your template and how much you want to hide it. 
Making the template lines brighter will definitely make it easier to see when you're cutting, but then they'll show up a bit more in the final box. Here I've made them just dark enough to see, but they'll pretty much disappear once it's cut out and folded. <sighs> Thankfully that's just in the flap, so that's not going to affect the actual outward appearance. So let's hope we don't do that again or into something that actually is going to show. And so something like this, you got to be careful to not just stop thinking and then just kind of score the whole thing and then cut your box in half. We only want to cut here and here and we're not scoring there at all. So and I'll do that curve with some scissors. Then I'll just go in by hand and do some of these shorter ones. I do need to score here. I can score all the way across. Just be able to pop our box out. Let's cut this curve out with some scissors. And now we can just start bending on all of those score marks. And very quickly, we'll start seeing our box come to shape. Cut out this little notch too with some scissors. Actually, we'll try using a little hole punch for that. There we go. Very nice little notch. Now, before we forget and start gluing this up, let's cut out the hole for the window. And I made this super easy on myself by designing all these tiny little notches. Now for this window, you could use like a piece of transparency or when you get a box like this or clear plastic packaging, just save a piece of it and that'll make a great little window. There we go, nice little window. Just glue that in with a glue stick. dog hair for strength. Perfect. I'll put some glue stick on these flaps and fold this on up. Okay, one thing we didn't think about is our flap, so we'll cut that down. Perfect. That is a really nice looking box. And did we make it the right size? Does our Sam actually fit? Very nice fit. Oh, that window is really cool. Now, one final thing, a final little touch that I like to do with my boxes is add some packaging. I just have a scrap piece of foam core. I think I'll cut two. So it's a bit too tight just to try and cut out that circle, at least with a knife. So let's do this instead. Let's just cut four little corners. Perfect. And that. Slide in there. We have a really awesome professional looking box. That came out really, really nice. I really love the window. This looks so cool. Well, 
I think this box came out really nice. It's a very clean result. It fits the uh, Secret Sam perfectly. I think the window came out really cool. That came out even better than I thought it would. So I hope you can see that, you know, making boxes like this is quite easy, that that template site is a real time saver and a real asset to doing stuff like this. Packaging can take whatever it is you've made to a whole nother level. But a word of warning, don't overdo it. Just keep it simple. A nice box, that's all you need. Don't do this. All that for a pin? What? Anyway, my sincere thank you for watching. Once again, I am Nick D. Clements. If you're wondering, Nick is short for Nicholas and the D stands for Dawn. Anyway, I'm off to make something else. So this ring light, right? Designed to fit on a C stand. So it doesn't really fit too well on this Amazon basic light stand. There's quite a bit of play. However, a piece of CPVC fits perfectly into the ring light. And a regular piece of PVC fits perfectly over the Amazon stand. And a piece of CPVC fits perfectly into the piece of PVC. Put it all together, you get a perfect adapter for the Amazon basic stand to this ring light. <laughs>